എല്ലാ പ്രേക്ഷകർക്കും മെഡി ട്രാക്കിലേക്ക് സ്വാഗതം ഇന്ന് മെഡി ട്രാക്കിൽ അതിഥിയായിട്ടുള്ളത് മാംഗ്ലൂർ ജ്യോതി കാംസി ഹോസ്പിറ്റലിലെ പീഡിയാട്രിക് ഡെൻറ്റിസ്റ്റ് ഡോക്ടർ ദീപിക പയ്യാണ് മാം വെൽക്കം നമസ്കാരം മാം സി പീഡിയാട്രിക് ഡെൻറ്റിസ്റ്റ് സി ദാറ്റ് ഡിപ്പാർട്ട്മെൻറ്റ് വോട്ട് ഈസ് ദ ഇമ്പോർട്ടൻസ് ഓഫ് പീഡിയാട്രിക് ഡെൻറ്റിസ്റ്റ് പീഡിയാട്രിക് ഡെൻറ്റിസ്റ്റ് ഇസ് ബേസിക്കലി എ ഡെൻറ്റിസ്റ്റ് ഹു ക്യാൻ ഡെലിവർ ഡെൻറ്റൽ കെയർ ഫോർ ചിൽഡ്രൻ we all know that children are very scared of hospital yeah. so getting them for dental treatment becomes very difficult yeah. so we as pediatric dentist we are qualified and trained to handle behavior of children mm. and uh, we insist that children should visit pediatric dentist frequently mm. so that they become familiar with our dental setup mm. and they start to cooperate better mm-hmm. so the biggest challenge in delivering any kind of dental treatment whether mm. it is filling root canal or removal of teeth mm. for children mm. is uh, difficult because uh, they are uncooperative most mm. children don't like any kind of unpleasant experience at all mm. so when they visit us frequently and they get familiar with our setup yeah. what we tend to do is we build a rapport with them we mm. understand their behavior mm. and accordingly we treat them for their disease okay. dental disease okay so pediatric dentist uh, uh, plays a very important role in developing that kind of rapport with children uh-huh. so that whenever they have any dental problems uh-huh. we can deal with them in a better way more pleasant way parents also will be very happy uh-huh. if dental treatment is delivered to children uh-huh. without any unpleasant experience see as we know that by birth there is no uh, teeth for the children okay then at what time they should to visit a dental uh, that means at what time they should to visit a doctor so at birth uh, some children have teeth yeah uh, very few people about uh, 1 in 10 or 1 in 100 may mm. have a uh, teeth at birth mm. now these teeth can cause problem during feeding Mm-hmm. and uh, may get swallowed and can cause any complication so we as pediatric dentist uh, we also remove the teeth mm-hmm. so that the child can feed better mm-hmm. and mother and child are both comfortable mm-hmm. now when the teeth erupts into the oral cavity mm-hmm. that is maybe some children get their first teeth by 6 months mm-hmm. some children get their first teeth by 1 year so mm-hmm. generally by the first birthday mm-hmm. all children will have one or the other teeth in their mouth Mm-hmm. so what we recommend is that parents should visit the pediatric dentist mm-hmm. as soon as the first teeth appears in the oral mm-hmm. cavity mm-hmm. now what we do during this visit is we tell the parent how they can clean the teeth yeah. because the most important uh, factor that can cause any dental problem whether mm-hmm. is uh, whether it is cavities in children mm-hmm. or later on it could be uh, any other dental problem mm-hmm. all of that starts because we don't clean the teeth properly okay. so we tell the parent how they can clean the teeth mm-hmm. and uh, even with one or two teeth in mouth we teach them how mm-hmm. to clean the teeth From because e- even it is one or two teeth in mouth that that time itself we should start the cleaning cleaning yeah, but and but that see, is very difficult to do for parents yeah. because they so have the actually parent uh, doesn't have any idea about how to clean or properly or scientifically yes. how to clean the teeth scientifically yes. so different dental aids are available hmm. if there is one or two teeth the hmm. mouth is very small the yeah. parent is very apprehensive can i put my hand inside the mouth yeah. Yeah. or will it cause any infection hmm. so we tell them what dental aids can be used to clean the teeth hmm. there are dental wipes there are finger brushes hmm. the other challenge most parents feel is that the child is moving all the time the child hmm. is so small hmm. how can we make them stand and brush for one or two minutes hmm. so we as pediatric dentists can tell them different positions mm-hmm. that the child and parent can take mm-hmm. so that they can uh, accomplish tooth brushing more easily mm-hmm. more effectively mm-hmm. so that they don't cause any dental caries for the okay. child see, see ma'am br- regarding brushing i think that parents have an idea but see when you just in uh, that uh, just in from that uh, when the uh, child has two or two, three teeth that time what kind of brush we should use whether it is needed brush or just use of using finger we can clean the teeth so uh, what i generally recommend is that uh, parents should brush the teeth whether it is one teeth or two teeth mm-hmm. and especially if the child is being fed in the night and put to sleep mm-hmm. i always say that you brush the teeth mm-hmm. wipe the teeth and mm-hmm. put the child to sleep mm-hmm. so usually when small 
teeth portions are erupted what mm -hmm. we recommend use of tooth wipes mm -hmm. there is something called tooth wipes mm -hmm. so that can just be wrapped around the parents fing uh, finger mm -hmm. and can teeth can be cleaned with that mm -hmm. when more than three or four teeth are erupted mm -hmm. and the child is grown little big the mouth mm -hmm. can open little more mm -hmm. there is something called as finger brush which can be okay. inserted on the finger of the parent mm -hmm on the finger so they can easily brush and clean the teeth effectively okay so these two things we usually recommend for children less than one year of age okay so when child becomes more than one year mm. one to two years they can mm. use a junior toothbrush with okay. small head soft mm. bristles soft brush. Yes. Okay. yes see, see ma'am after see which age on that means which age group on uh, the problems will be more and when you are observing the teeth children's teeth then you can see that when you are observing that which age on you will get the problems are more complicated Yes. So, teeth. what happens is when the child is growing and yeah. he comes to two or three years of age, yeah. usually children go to preschool or a play school. Mm -hmm. Now, what happens is parents have to pack some snacks and midday meals or something. So, usually parents uh, pack uh, some food items like mm -hmm. cookies mm -hmm. or uh, pastries or mm -hmm. these kind of things which can cause cavity to them. Yeah. And when they return back, by then there are too much of time has elapsed from mm. the time they have eaten they have not brushed their teeth mm. so usually between two to four years we see that a lot of children have cavities mm -hmm. and this is mainly because of the snacking habit that is present in children mm. as they go to school okay. when they are at home even if they eat something the parent yeah. is there after them to tell them go and gargle yeah, your mouth yeah. which does not happen most of the time in school mm -hmm. because of which we see that there is too much caries mm. another age group is at the age of one year hmm. or one and a half years hmm. so here what is happening is the mother is putting the child to sleep hmm. after feeding yeah because the mother is also tired she also yeah. wants Correct. to sleep the yeah. child also has to sleep hmm. so what the parent does is the parent i mean the mother feeds the child yeah. and puts the child directly to sleep without cleaning the teeth yeah. now the problem starts with this where hmm. the child is uh, sleeping with milk which is stagnating on the teeth mm -hmm. which causes something called as early childhood caries mm -hmm. so at one year it is because of improper feeding habit and mm -hmm. no oral hygiene yeah. that is followed mm -hmm. at bedtime mm -hmm. if you see the two and three year old group age group it is because of snacking at play school or preschool okay. like that when the child becomes six year old mm -hmm. most parents are unaware that there is a permanent molar which has erupted mm -hmm. The uh, children have two set of teeth. One yeah. is the milk teeth, yeah. which starts by six months, mm -hmm. and by three year, uh, uh, two years, children have most of the milk teeth. Mm -hmm. But the first permanent molar erupts at the age of six years, mm -hmm. and it is erupting right at the back of your mouth. Okay. So parents think that permanent teeth is coming only when the front teeth has yeah. fallen and come. Yeah. So most parents tend to ignore oral hygiene or mm. brushing mm. at the last tooth yeah. because the child is not cooperative by six yeah. years. Child wants to brush independently. Mm -hmm. Now parents are also giving them that autonomy that you brush your teeth. Mm -hmm. Parents are busy with the second child mm -hmm. or their own household course. Mm -hmm. So what happens is that uh, the uh, first molar which has erupted right at the back there a lot of food gets accumulated mm -hmm. and this tooth becomes carious. Okay. So the second is uh, first we said one and a half years or one years. Second is second two and three years. Mm -hmm. The third peak of caries incidence we see is at six years. Okay. That is because of unaware parents are unaware that the first permanent molar is mm -hmm. erupted. Mm -hmm. Then onwards again you will see at uh, nine to ten years because there is an exchange of uh, milk teeth to permanent teeth. Okay. So the milk teeth fall and yeah. permanent okay. teeth erupt Six in its place. Me, I wonder what is the importance of milk teeth? Milk teeth, uh, most parents think that when there is cavity in milk teeth, mm. we can just ignore it yeah. because anyway really, they are going yeah. to fall Correct. away. Now, uh, it is very important to treat milk teeth for mm. few reasons. First mm. reason is when the teeth has cavity, mm. children don't eat food properly because okay. it is painful. Mm. And because of that what happens is... Uh, uh, the child's nutrition becomes poor, mm -hmm. child's growth gets affected, mm -hmm. child has pain and misses school very often, mm -hmm. so it can affect their schooling and academics, learning. Mm -hmm. Also, 
it can cause problem in their oral cavity to the extent that they may not be brushing the teeth at all okay. because it is painful mm -hmm. also uh, children who have lot of cavities in their childhood mm -hmm. they tend to be irritated all the time mm -hmm. now these milk teeth if they are filled at the right time when they have cavities mm -hmm. children tend to enjoy their childhood mm -hmm. grow well mm -hmm. besides all this mm -hmm. the primary teeth has two important functions mm -hmm. one is to develop speech okay. like i told you two or three year old yep. when they have multiple cavities mm -hmm. their speech also gets affected mm -hmm. they can't pronounce the uh, few words very clearly mm -hmm. Second thing is this milk teeth has to remain till the permanent teeth occupy their space. Mm -hmm. In case this milk teeth are lost prematurely because mm -hmm. of cavities, mm -hmm. they become into pieces and uh, they are gone away. Mm -hmm. So what happens is the space that is required for the permanent teeth to erupt mm -hmm. gets closed. Okay. So the milk teeth is like a shell which is keeping the space for the permanent teeth to occupy later in future. Okay. So if you ignore the problems of milk teeth, mm -hmm. you are definitely going to ignore the child, uh, child's permanent teeth. Mm -hmm. So definitely we see that when parents have not treated uh, children with uh, dental caries in milk teeth, mm -hmm. we see a lot of them having uh, crowded teeth in permanent dentition because the space has become closed. Okay. See, 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 after getting permanent teeth, we can see that some, uh, see some children have the uh, teeth are positioned in badly. Yeah. In such a case, uh, how to, what kind of treatments are given? Yes. So, uh, we can see that the child might have crowded teeth in permanent dentition yeah. at a very early age. Yeah. Usually by 8 or 9 years, we mm. see that uh, the incisors, permanent incisors have erupted in a very crowded fashion. Yeah. That is a definite indicator that this child is going to have malocclusion or mm. crowded teeth in permanent dentition. Okay. So, we can take necessary steps. So, uh, something like uh, uh, extracting the teeth at the right time so that the tooth can come into its proper place mm -hmm. or we can s we also see that some patients have uh, different oral habits mm -hmm. like some children suck their thumb okay. because of which the teeth gets uh, projected mm. forwards. Yeah. So, these uh, things if we catch them very early, they mm. can be intercepted so that the child does not have a very badly placed teeth or mm -hmm. a very crowded or mm -hmm. a very projected teeth which okay. most children mm -hmm. tend to have. Mm -hmm. The other thing we can uh, prevent malocclusion is by treating the primary teeth timely. Mm -hmm. okay. Like I told you that if there is cavities mm -hmm. and we don't treat them, mm -hmm. the teeth are lost, mm -hmm. the jaw becomes smaller mm -hmm. and the permanent teeth Correct. does not have space for the uh, for it to erupt okay. because of which obviously they will end up with crowded okay. teeth or malocclusion. Okay. See another thing is accidentally happened see when fallen the children that time what happened broken teeth we can see that uh, what kind of treatment that you want see most probably in school or even home we can see like that see that broken po see portion is there yes. then even parents doesn't know how to what? keep that one properly. Yes. They, uh, could you please explain that one? Yeah. Right? Usually children are very active yeah. individuals, yeah. they tend to run, they tend mm -hmm. to fall. Mm -hmm. Now if it is a very small child, mm -hmm. let us say it is a 3 year old or a 5 year old, mm -hmm. now that means they have only milk teeth mm -hmm. and if they fall mm -hmm. and the tooth is fallen out, we mm -hmm. generally don't bother to put the teeth back. Mm. or if the tooth is pushed inside mm. the tooth have the chance to come out on its own yeah. but whenever a child has fallen whether it is school or house oh. I will definitely recommend the parent or the teacher in either case scenarios to look for the teeth yeah. because we are assuming that teeth has fallen out sometimes the teeth can get pushed inside the jaws yeah. and it there are some cases where the teeth have been seen in the nasal cavity or in the throat or in the stomach yeah. So, these situations can arise. So, yeah. if you have found a tooth, that means yeah. you are definitely okay. safe. Okay. Uh, so, at th uh, th up to 5 years, we generally th uh, wait and see that the tooth can come on its own and yeah. things like that. Okay. But if it is an 8 or 9 year old child mm. and has fallen, mm. again I would suggest look for the tooth or the tooth piece. Okay. Sometimes the tooth fractures yeah. in such a way that there is a small piece of teeth that has fallen away. Correct. If you find it, Mm. and you even put it in water mm. and bring it to the dentist mm. we can fix the same piece of the teeth back on the uh, uh, child's mouth that means that uh, broken part put in water water, water. Okay. simplest is 
yeah uh, drinking water yeah okay. that's one enough in case you you have found the whole teeth this yeah. i'm talking if it is a piece of piece teeth piece of teeth the, just the teeth piece Correct. that you can see yeah. in the mouth mm-hmm. but sometimes what happens is uh, whole, usually maybe, when yeah, they play in the playground yeah. the whole teeth, teeth comes out okay. and if you find that whole teeth yeah. you can either put it in milk Oh. take a uh, packet of milk okay. uh, and just pop the teeth inside the packet seal the packet and bring bring it down. or you can even keep it in a bowl or a jar with mm. water tender mm. coconut water mm. anything basically we don't want the teeth to become dry okay so you can put it in mm. a liquid mm. like milk or tender coconut mm. or plain water mm. or if uh, if there is a primary health care center close mm. by or if the school has a infirmary then you can also place it in saline Okay. So, but this needs to reach the dentist mm. at least 60 minutes from the time it has fallen out. Okay. Of course, there is a chance for us to put the teeth back into the mouth, mm. but if it is before 60 minutes, mm. there there is a very good chance that the tooth becomes normal. Very good result you will get. Yes. See, see, ma'am, after that, this portion is they are fixing there or whole teeth fixing there. See, after fixed it. Uh, what kind of result how much will be the result is it yeah. uh, properly working or before uh, what is happening yeah. what kind all of functions all that depends on the age at which this has occurred yeah. usually it is the front teeth which pops out yeah so if it is before uh, 10 years hmm then there are chances that the treatment process will take very long Hmm. but if it is after 10 years we yeah. say that the root apex is closed yeah. then the treatment duration is less but okay. if the tooth is brought in a solution mm-hmm. and not dry mm. and within 60 minutes of tooth coming out mm. the success rate is very good mm-hmm. we usually put the teeth back and splint it and do a root canal for it mm-hmm. and save the tooth in the person's mouth okay and the success is very good okay this is this when the portion of teeth is fixing there or pasted there that to, after one or two years we can see that there is a color change yes. sir yes. why it is happening so sometimes what happens is the tooth a piece which is brought was brought yeah. dry yeah in such cases Correct. this kind of discoloration can happen mm-hmm. if it is brought in any solution mm-hmm. and it is not allowed to dry mm-hmm. it may not happen mm-hmm. the other reason is whenever teeth fractures mm-hmm. to human eye we can only see some portion mm-hmm. there will be some micro cracks that mm-hmm. are leading to a tissue called pulp which is okay. the only vital tissue in the tooth mm-hmm. so whenever there is a fragment that is fixed mm-hmm. there will be some insults that continue to happen Uh, towards the pulp because okay. of which the pulp becomes non vital mm-hmm. or in general terminology to say the tooth becomes dead mm-hmm. but we don't consider that as failure mm-hmm. because even in that situation mm-hmm. when the patient is put on regular follow up mm-hmm. we can do a root canal and save the teeth in the oral cavity okay so how to apply root canal in especially in children case ma'am yeah so root canal is a procedure mm. where uh, the dental caries is reached the pulp okay so this procedure can happen for milk teeth also mm-hmm. as well as permanent teeth also mm-hmm. so in, when it happens in permanent teeth it is called as root canal treatment okay but when the same thing happens in milk teeth mm-hmm. it is root canal treatment but the terminology used is pulpectomy mm-hmm. but the process is just like adult root canal but mm-hmm. it's a simpler process than the adult root canal mm-hmm. so uh, root canal treatment is done for children Yeah. quite successfully mm-hmm. like for adult patients mm-hmm. but most people uh, tend to uh, shy away from root canal treatment because children are uncooperative mm-hmm. like any other root canal treatment when you do root canal treatment for children mm-hmm. we need about two or three visits appointments yeah. there also three or uh, two or three visits is enough required required, required that one for okay milk, teeth, milk teeth, also. teeth also so the children may not want to come back mm-hmm. uh, children cannot sit for a uh, longer duration Mm. and also that the children will be uh, uncooperative mm. because of all these reasons most parents hesitate to get root canal treatment done for their mm-hmm. children mm-hmm. but uh, these things can be dealt when you see a pediatric dentist they mm. know how to manage 
behavior mm. they also know how to manage the palpal issues in children mm-hmm. so it can be accomplished quite successfully provided you see a pediatric dentist mm-hmm. for a general dentist it becomes little difficult to handle mm-hmm. the children mm-hmm. whereas a pediatric dentist can do it very successfully okay. see ma'am we we heard that uh, chewing gum helps us to reduce the tooth decay okay. is it any scientific support that you know simply saying uh, chewing gum when we are no, using chewing gum usually gum. what we do is uh, mm. like i told you there is there is a disease process called as early childhood caries mm. so when early childhood caries is seen in children lot mm. of teeth are decayed mm. so the saliva also has a lot of microorganisms that can cause further decay in other teeth in their mouth mm. so in such children or children who are undergoing orthodontic treatment mm. such uh, patients or if the ch- uh, child has a lot of defective teeth mm. in such patients we ourselves recommend use of chewing gums mm. but there is a way to use it it is not for just uh, like a habit mm. it is meant to give saliva some uh, properties which can prevent further caries it mm. does work because it stimulates the flow of saliva mm. so when fresh saliva comes there are more minerals that can cause uh, a remineralization of some of the cavitations mm-hmm. as well as it can boost the salivary function to fight against dental caries mm-hmm. but this should not be used generally Mm. like it is uh, advertised even in televisions yeah. uh, that mm. uh, it can prevent uh, caries mm. but this is not for everyone okay. it is specifically if the child has a lot of caries and mm. the dentist assumes a, a, a role of preventive program mm. and then the dentist is recommending that you can use chewing gums mm. and for a duration of time it is mm. not like you start using chewing gum and you can continue to use it and you will never get caries okay. that is that is a wrong understanding of mm. this mm. Mm-hmm. okay see even my uh, sleeping time children are making ground grinding sound that yes. one is it common is is, is there is a treatment for that one yeah so this has become a very common problem mm. not just in children even in adults where there is a grinding of teeth yeah, and this so most probably this this sound will uh, producing only in sleeping time huh? yes yes is no other uh, uh, individuals do chew their teeth and grind their teeth mm. uh, in mm. the day time yeah. but uh, when you are in sleep yeah. uh, it is it becomes so annoying mm. that either the parent sleeping by the side of the yeah, child correct. says that i can hear a lot of yeah. noise i am mm. worried whether the teeth mm. will fracture mm-hmm. uh, it can happen Mm. and uh, this is sometimes uh, attributed to the school and school stress also mm-hmm. but uh, preliminary what we would like to do is uh, we would like to deworm the child mm-hmm. so that you know the grinding can stop but if it continues we can do treatment in such a way that we can prevent the tooth fractures mm-hmm. and we will give them any appliances that can be worn at sleep comfortably so mm-hmm. they sleep well and they don't grind and damage their teeth see actually see ma'am why it happened Uh, like i told you it could be because of uh, worms uh, mm. so we pref- prefer to send them to a pediatrician and get a deworming done yeah b- this helps a considerable amount of children that mm. we see with the grinding habit but mm. some of them continue to have grinding habit even after deworming mm. then it could be probably because of the school stress they have a lot of homework lot of activities mm-hmm. or there is a lot of pressure from the parents yeah. for the child to perform well in school mm-hmm. these kind of factors can mm-hmm. induce stress in children mm-hmm. although it appears that how can children be stressed but these days we see a lot of children having such kind of stress and because of which they manifest as uh, Uh, grinding habit in children okay see we have discussed so far we have discussed the uh, uh, various types of dk and its treatment see actually how to protect the teeth ma'am yeah so that is the most important thing mm. most of the dental caries that we see in all our uh, population is preventable mm-hmm. so if you want to prevent having dental caries there are just two or three important thing that one needs to mm-hmm. follow it is first important thing is what are you eating Mm-hmm. if you are eating too many things continuously mm-hmm. or if you are eating chocolates and biscuits very frequently confectioneries mm-hmm. such food can damage the teeth mm-hmm. if you are consuming a lot of cola or beverages mm-hmm. uh, carbonated beverages they tend to damage your teeth mm-hmm. so one component is about what we eat mm-hmm. the next thing is what we do after eating okay so after eating any food if the person is into a habit of gargling the mouth Mm. swishing the mouth even okay. with plain water mm. and 
additionally good if one can brush their okay. teeth and maintain good oral hygiene mm-hmm. then we will not see dental caries okay. but in small children what happens is for reasons uh, uh, numerous they mm-hmm. don't brush their teeth well properly okay. and they they have to go to school for 6 hours mm-hmm. parents can't pack too many tiffins mm-hmm. or uh, uh, you know they have different kinds of snacks they share snacks at school mm-hmm. so uh, when we have situations like this we, uh, neither the diet nor the oral hygiene is completely under the control of parents Mm -hmm. or school Mm -hmm. in such situations I recommend that the children are brought to pediatric dentist Mm -hmm. because we can do something called as fluoride treatment which is Mm -hmm. done uh, depending upon the type of cavities the child has or Mm -hmm. depending upon the oral hygiene the child can maintain Mm -hmm. so we have an agent called as fluoride which can considerably reduce the amount of caries in children which we apply in our clinics for children so that they can benefit from not having caries See ma'am, see we can see that uh, there are children are, children are mentally retarded. See actually they cannot uh, frequently come and visit the doctor. Such a situation, how to give the treatment? Okay. So we see that uh, there are several conditions in childhood, like yeah. one of which you said mental retardation, because of which children don't even go to normal schools. Mm. They go to special schools. Yeah, so we consider these children specially abled. Mm. Now they cannot maintain good oral hygiene because mm. they lack that kind of men, um, mm. mental de- uh, IQ or mm. they even lack manual dexterity. Mm. So in such patients when you visit a pediatric dentist the first thing they do is they can do all the dental treatment for these kind of children mm. under general anesthesia. So, okay. when the child is put under general anesthesia, their total oral rehabilitation can be done. Yes. But thereafter, they are going back to their own condition for the rest of their life. Hmm. So, what we do as pediatric dentist is that we will advocate some oral hygiene method that is suitable for every different condition. Okay. So, we, we will tell, uh, tell the parent to use different kinds of oral hygiene aids suitable for their child hmm. so that they can maintain oral hygiene. So, they can prevent further dental problems for these kind of children. We can, uh, we also see that there are some children who are very uh, badly behaved Mm -hmm. or they are absolutely not cooperative for dental treatment, but Mm -hmm. they have a lot of root canal treatments to be done. Mm -hmm. So, it becomes very challenging for us also to deliver Mm -hmm. uh, treatment at times. Mm -hmm. We also can do uh, dental treatment for these patients under general anesthesia. Mm -hmm. So, all their dental problems can be addressed at one visit. So, if uh, any patient uh, finds it difficult to uh, come frequently to dentist or if the child is uncooperative or has any medical underlying condition because of which they cannot uh, take uh, dental treatment frequently, uh-huh. all these treatments can be done under general anesthesia. Okay. But it's like in the end of the episode, if it have ended up here, in this episode, we are going to talk about Mangalore Jodhi KMC Hospital Pediatric Dentist, Dr. Deepika Payana. Thank you, ma'am. Namaskar.